pretty monumental moments. Last night, I caught the premiere yeah. here at Toronto Film Festival, and I won two standing ovations. As you two felt that and walked out on stage, what were you experiencing? What were you thinking about? I was trying to hold it together. My face started the, the uncontrollable twitching that happens when you're trying to fight the tears and just being so proud of, of the audience for being moved, for having the open heart to, to be moved, and for receiving us with such love. Uh, it's overwhelming every time, every single time. It blew me away, truly. Um, and you're standing there with these people who you become your brothers and sisters because you were on a mission to tell this story more than anything. To, a vital story. A vital story to raise the consciousness uh, of, of who we are. Uh, and, and our American history. So just standing there, you know, arm in arm with these people, you felt like you couldn't be more blessed. A powerful, explosive film on so many levels. And for you, Gabrielle, a, a very, very personal one. Your character uh, is raped yeah. in this film. Uh, you ended up writing an op-ed about that experience. What was your hope? And how did you eventually uh, even get comfortable enough to bring this to light and share what you went through that was so uh, uh, disgusting and, and, and soul crushing? I've been offered other roles where the character that they wanted me to play was raped. And I, it was, I was like, no, it, it's too emotionally scary. Um, I've been, I'm in a good place and I'm gonna stay there and this subject matter is not important enough for me to go there. And then I read The Birth of a Nation and I made the decision that my discomfort is a small is a small price to pay um, for the powerful imagery for to allow people to put a face that you know well to sexual violence. I made the conscious choice for my character not to speak during the film because I thought that was more symbolic of what women at the time were um, experiencing the horror and the powerlessness that they, that they um, were experiencing and what we continue to experience today, the voicelessness and the powerlessness. It's work that I've been doing since I was 19 and ever since I've been a professional. If you, if you put a microphone in my face, I'm going to talk about sexual violence, uh, whether that be with Oprah or as I um, you know, lobby the Senate uh, for more funding for rape crisis centers and, and uh, um, you know, testing for rape kits. So my op-ed is to remind people I didn't just start doing the work. I'm not doing this as a PR stunt. I make no money. Um, my soul is replenished with every life saved and every mind changed. Some people call it a controversy. I call it an opportunity. I'm getting more microphones. I have more reach. I have more people saying thank you. Thank you for not running away from this opportunity to save your brand um, and by distancing yourself from tough subject matter. So when I walk out on that stage, um, the tears and the the, uh, the the humility is for so many people who are not received well uh, in their truth. The scene with Hark and Esther, where you know he doesn't cast her aside, he doesn't forsake her, he doesn't deem her defective or damaged. Um, with so many of us who have survived horrific sexual violence, um, have experienced. It was important for us to show the humanity that we are capable of as a people and to let everyone know that there is, there is hope in humanity if we allow ourselves to evolve and change.